Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 4th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ever wonder how opening an Excel spreadsheet may end up launching Cobalt Strike on your system? Well, Brad looked at a recent example of a malicious Excel spreadsheet that did exactly that. He found it in a sandbox and the first thing that the macro, of course, does so as you launch it is it downloads what Brad believes is the system BC malware. Now, System PC has been around for about one and a half years or so and uh, has been used as a proxy. But in this particular case, it also then is being used to download Cobalt Strike, but only if you are connected to an active directory domain. This is behavior that has been spotted before and for example with the uh, solar winds compromise uh, this kind of behavior was often mentioned and the idea here apparently is that if you are connected to an active directory domain you're first of all less likely a sandbox that someone is using for malware analysis and also you're more likely part of a larger organization that uh, it may be worthwhile to actually probe manually somewhat and then possibly deploy some more customized ransomware. Of course, Brad's malware analysis system is joined to an Active Directory domain and that's why he was able to spot that last part of the infection. And with everybody's eyes still being on SolarWinds, SolarWinds did publish an update fixing three vulnerabilities two of which are rated uh, critical, one in the Microsoft message queue, which can lead to remote code execution. Essentially, there is no access control being done, plus uh, the messages are then being deserialized in an unsafe manner. So that way you can then trigger a deserialization vulnerability for a full remote code execution. We also do have uh, today on Thursday at uh, noon Eastern time a uh, special lightning uh, summit scheduled where a few SANS instructors uh, will sort of take uh, their perspective on the entire solar winds incident. So hope to see some of you there. Should be a pretty exciting and sort of fast paced event with uh, 10 minute lightning talks uh, from different experts in the field. And I think it was just yesterday or maybe day before yesterday that I gave sort of a quick update on the Sonic Wall incident and noted that, well, uh, there is no patch available for uh, this SMA 100 vulnerability. Well, and uh, now there is. Today, Sonic Wall did release a patch for SMA 100 devices. The firmware update number is 10.2.0.5-29. SV. Given that the vulnerability is already being exploited, uh, you definitely should apply this quickly. And yes, make sure that you're using multi-factor authentication for the administrative interface uh, in case there is another vulnerability, which I'm sure there will be. And then we got a couple of interesting bulletins from Cisco. The first critical one, and in my opinion, probably the more critical one overall here with a base CVSS score of 9.8 affects the small business line of devices. So these are your RV160s and RV260s. Uh, vulnerability in the web interface does allow arbitrary code execution without authentication. In addition, uh, there is an interesting denial of service vulnerability that affects uh, some of Cisco's larger routers. And apparently all it takes to exploit this vulnerability is uh, a lot of ICMP echo requests, speak pings to uh, the interface IP address of uh, the particular uh, router. Now, not clear how many pings it takes, probably quite a few, so you have to be a little bit persistent here, but the attack should be relatively easy to pull off if uh, that IP address is exposed. 
And then we've got a couple more affected systems that are vulnerable to the Linux sudo vulnerability that was patched a week or two ago. First of all, Mac OS is still vulnerable, even if you are running the latest, greatest version that just came out uh, this week. Also, Cisco with uh, these updates is patching the uh, sudo vulnerability in some of its equipment. And finally, we got a critical vulnerability that was patched in the Realtek RTL 8195A Wi-Fi module. It's one of those Wi-Fi modules that you find a lot in small portable devices, sort of IoT style devices, and a number of remote code execution vulnerabilities were fixed in this update. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening. Don't forget about the Lightning Summit on Thursday at noon Eastern and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.